and welcome to my Let's Develop session about refactoring in Eclipse. One thing I find when working with people on code is that many of them are afraid of doing a refactoring because refactorings tend to break their code. And I really think this is not necessary because if you use the tools available in modern IDEs like Eclipse and if you go on about the refactoring in a systematic way, there's really uh, no need to be afraid because you're very unlikely to break your code. And even if you do, it's easy to recover. So what I kind of want to do in this session is uh, pick the first example of Martin Fowler's book on refactoring, this one here, which is a really great book, though it's admittedly a bit dusted by now because it's from 1999 and it's still based on Java 101. But it's a great book. And I'm going to pick the very first example of this book, migrate it from Java 1.1 to Java 1.7, and repeat all the refactorings Martin did here together with you guys. Okay, and since this is supposed to be a hands-on session, let's get started. The system we're going to refactor in this episode is a very simple program that calculates and prints a statement of a customer's chart at the video store. The program is told which movies the customer rented and for how long and depending on this calculates how much the customer owes the video show store. So the first model class we have here is the movie class and it's implemented in a very simple way telling us that the movie consists of both a title and a price code where the price code is actually one of these three constants so there's children's movies, there's regular movies and there's new releases. Depending on this, we define rental as uh, a movie and the number of days uh, the movie has been rented by the customer. This is pretty simple as well. And then here comes the interesting part. So we have a customer, and a customer consists both of a name and of a list of rentals, where we can add new rentals to the customer um, in case he rents a new movie from the video store. And then we have down here the statement method which computes the actual statement we want to uh, have for the customer currently. So let's have a quick view at what's computed here. We have a total amount. This is the amount uh, of bugs the customer owes the video store. And there's also uh, the notion of frequent renter points which are calculated based on the movie rental. Um, so that every customer has a number of frequent renter point points based on what he did in the past. Then the first thing we add here to the result, this is our actual statement, is ha some header information that says rental record for customer name, new line. Then we go through all the rentals in this line. We say the amount we owe for this specific rental is initially set to zero. Um, then we go over the movie by price code and say, okay, in case it's a regular movie, uh, it costs the customer two bucks to rent this movie. And in case the number of days he rented the movie is bigger than two, so starting with the third day, um, he actually pays one buck fifty for every additional day. In case of a new release, it just costs him uh, three bucks per day he rented the movie and for children's movies the initial price is set to 1.5 bucks and for every day longer than three days it is rented he pays and the customer pays another 1.5 bucks then there's the frequent renter points calculated down here so there's one frequent renter point for uh, every movie the customer rented and in case the customer rented a new release for more than one day, um, he gets an additional renter point, frequent renter point. After this calculation, the actual um, movie is added to the statement. So there's a tab inserted, the title of the movie, another tab, and then the value of this uh, current movie. And in the end, we add the value of the current movie to the total amount the customer owes the video store. We do this in the loop for every movie the customer rented and then in the end we add some footer information like the total amount uh, the customer owes the store is total amount and the c you earned frequent renter points, frequent renter points. What do you think about this program? I encourage you to stop this video at this point 
and give yourself a minute to think about this code and figure out what's actually wrong with it. Did that? Okay, so then here's my take. If I look at the design of this pro program, I would say that it's not very nice, it's not very readable, and it's certainly not object-oriented because all the logic is tangled in this big mass of spaghetti code here in the statement method. But as long as this is all the logic of the program and it's not going to change and there's nothing to be added, I don't really see a problem with this quick and dirty implementation we have here. After all, it compiles, it works, and the compiler does not really care uh, whether or not the code looks good. But problems start as soon as you yourself or other people want to change this code or use this code as part of a bigger system. Then there are some things here that really, really concern me. Let's consider, for example, that in the future the uh, movie store comes to you and says, okay, I, I have a new web page and I want to have the statement output to the user on this web page, so I need HTML output. Easiest thing for you to do is just go here, grab this whole method, copy paste it, call the new, st new thing here HTML statement, and then add all the HTML formatting information here. Easy, huh? Okay, but you probably guessed it by now. Next thing that's gonna happen is that the customer comes up and tells you, oh, by the way, um, I want to change the price calculation for the movie, like introducing a new type of movie or just uh, raising the prices because, I mean, it happens now and then, doesn't it? What's going to happen then? Because now I have duplicated the price calculation logic here and here. So I have to change the calculation at two places. And maybe you're better than me, but knowing myself, I will mess this up pretty soon because I will forget to update one of the two places and then the program behavior gets inconsistent. Imagine what will happen to the video store if the prices they charge the customer depends on whether they output the bill on printer or on their website. So that's not what we're gonna wanna have and that's why I'm going to undo this pretty hacky solution real quick so that we can find something better some kind of solution that enables us to change the code and to extend the code as new requirements come in. And this is exactly what we're going to do throughout the next episode. To give you a short outline, we're going to at first develop a sophisticated test suite for our program so that we can do the refactoring without taking the risk of breaking our existing logic. And then we're going to incrementally refine a program till we reach a state where we can reuse it and actually extend it without the need for any code duplication. Okay, this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If not, drop me a comment or send me a message. Let me know what you think. I'm always happy to improve on your feedback. You might also want to have a look at my channel and the other things I'm doing and give me feedback about what you think. Thanks a lot for watching again and hope to see you next time.